Hello and welcome back. And today I have an update on the roughly two week old Sankei Koi Fry from my recent Sankei spawning. Now I've held off on doing an update just because I haven't really seen any large progression in the fry that you'd be able to notice. So I thought I'd wait until I saw some real noticeable changes in the fry. Now about two weeks ago the fry looked like this. Now this was a day after they hatched and as you can see they have roughly quadrupled in size over the last two weeks which is really great growth to see. And they came from this spawning here. Actually, this is the exact spawning that the fish came from. So you can see the traits the fish might inherit from their parents and so on. However, over the next two weeks, I'm going to be sort of keeping updates on them as they grow a bit faster now and you can sort of see the nice patterns in them. As you can see here on some of the fish, the black is starting to come through. Now, over the first few days, you couldn't really notice this. There was no real signs of this. But as you can see, some of these fry have really started to develop some nice colors. And like I said previously, the home spawning is really for fun. So for me, I'm not really trying to make any profit or make any amazing fish out of this. It's really just for a bit of fun. Now, growth-wise, the fry have been doing really well. All of them have really fat bellies. And since they've did, like completely quadrupled in size over the last two weeks, I'm fairly confident that the natural forage in the pond is doing completely fine for them. At the moment, they're just eating natural bugs and such that are in the pond. As I'll show you in a second, the pond they're currently placed in has no filter, no aeration. But as you can see here, they have really fat bellies. And that's because the pond is just like a little nature pond I had around the corner. And it's just teeming with sort of natural invertebrae and such that the fry are feeding on. And as you can see here, they've got really nice fat bellies underneath them. And they're growing really well. So I'm fairly confident they've got enough food for the time being. Now, as they get bigger, I will introduce some new food into there. I might get them on some really light crumb. But that's really not until they get a bit larger. But realistically, I'm just going to keep a close eye on them. And then about the time they get to a size where they might have to switch over to different food sources, I'll provide those new food sources. Now, I've sort of been having a look at them a bit closer and just sort of seeing if I can see anything nice coming from these fry. As you can see, there's a real variety in size. Some of them are still quite small, but this is to be expected. These smaller fish just simply are being outcompeted by the other fish. Now, luckily, I haven't seen any Tobies yet. Those are just like extra large fry. Now, in honesty, they're not big enough yet to really see that. So I reckon in about two, three weeks time, you'll start to see some of the fry getting absolutely massive compared to other ones. If this does happen, I will remove these fry because you can get issues with cannibalism and such because when these fry get too big, they eat the smaller ones. But as you can see here, some of them are a lot smaller than the other ones. There's not a lot I can do about that. Those fry will likely just be outcompeted and probably die. But, you know, that's just sort of how things go. You can't really do much about it. It's just really how nature works and natural selection works with the fry. However, as you can see with the rest of the fry, they're really fat and they're really healthy, which is a good sign, really. The underwater footage helps me really see that. And in the sunlight as well, you can really get a good look at them. Now, this is only a small batch. There's probably about a few thousand in the pond. And I've only got about, I'd say, 50 to 40 here. Now, this is one of my personal favourites. You can really see the black coming through on this fish. Of course, the black you're seeing now will be nothing like the pattern they get when they get bigger. But when they're about one years old, the black they'll have on their back tends not to stay. It'll tend to fade away and new black will come through. But the strength of the colour is what I'm really looking at here. Like I said, this is a home spawning, so my plan is really only to keep about 10 fish from this spawning. Any others I might have, I'll give to friends and such. Or any of you if you are interested, of course. But I need to wait about a month to about an inch in length so I can probably choose out the fish I like. Now here's the pond they're in. Like I said, it is a nature pond, there's no filter. In fact, this is actually my first koi pond I ever had. Uh, this is like back in the day when I had, um, I'd say like five koi. They were really small by the way, they didn't stay in here the whole time. Basically my large pond had no filter either and I was getting a filter for it. But whilst that pond was setting up, I literally just developed this pond to put the koi in for the time being. However, since then, I'd say for about four years now, there's been no filter on this pond and that's allowed it to really naturally settle in and have the plants do the filtration for it, which is really good. There's like a little layer of silt and there is lily pads that are rooted into that silt. There's sort of bushes on the side. They all filter the pond naturally. And as you can see, the fry like to sit around these algae bushes on the edge. And that's because the algae bushes are just full of Daphnia and other natural little bugs. I don't know what they're called exactly. But if you get a scoop of water, you can see it's teeming with little bit bugs and such in there. They quite enjoy the pond as well. There's plenty of different places for them to hide. As you can see here, they like to hide amongst the bushes underneath the water. 
The leaves in there give them great cover and they sort of coast around in it in the shade. I like the bush as well because it provides good shade for the fish because believe it or not, they can get sunburned. So it's always good to provide some good shade for the fish. And that's what that plant and the, and the lily pads also provide. But yeah, they like to coast around in the algae. And this is sort of my first successful spawning, really. I've tried over the last few years. As you can see, this fish here is doing really well. Some nice black color. But like I said, you know, I'm not, the colors right now don't really matter. Um, they will change over the next few years. So it'll be interesting to see how that happens. I might keep some kahaku from this spawning, but I probably won't. It's really risky to keep kahaku from a sanke spawning because they can develop black at any point, And it's just, it's, it's just a risk you take doing that. So I doubt I will, but it really depends on seeing how the fry sort of grow on and such. But this is sort of my first successful growth of fry this so far. This is probably the furthest I've ever gotten them to. I have tried over the last three years to sort of spawn them. And I have got to the point that I've got fry, but I've just struggled to keep them alive. But this has been my first successful proper home spawning. So fingers crossed I can keep it going. Really, it was just sort of the perfect sort of time, I guess. We've been having a lot of warm weather at the moment, so the water's extra warm, so the fry growing extra fast. And it also means the algae's blooming a bit faster, and so and therefore natural bugs are a lot more abundant in the pond because they have more plankton and algae to feed on. Now, as you can see, there is a lot of different growth disparities in the fish. That one in between the two big ones is really small. But like I said, I'm not too worried. Those are just weaker fish, and it helps keep the numbers down if they do die off. It's just natural selection, to be completely honest. Now, as you can see here, there's quite a few of the fry that are sat underneath the lily pads. That's a good sign, just enjoying the shade. And that's kind of why the lily pads are in there. They filter the water and they provide shade for the fish. So I'm just glad to see they're sort of using that shade and understand what to do. But that one there has got some nice colours on it. I just like watching them to sort of see the sort of different characteristics of the fish. Like I said, I haven't actually uh, had a chance to sort of take out any deformed ones. Once they get to about an inch in length, I need to select the fry. And I'm not too confident with that. I've never really selected fry before at this sort of stage. So what I think I'll probably go off just to start off with is not pattern, but just merely body shape. If I see any deformed fry, I'll remove them and just get rid of them, obviously. But that's sort of the basis of what I'll do to start off with. Now, the issue with this nature pond is actually getting the fry out. That's probably the biggest issue I'll have. I, I, I will struggle to get all these fry out. But so my plan is just to leave them in here till they get a bit bigger. I'll leave them in here about for about four or five more weeks so they can put on about double the size inside like length and such that way it'll just be easy to catch them out and then sort of select through any deformed ones and take them out and such so the ones that are healthy can grow a bit faster but when i get to that stage obviously i'll make a video on it and document it if any of you have any tips for selecting fry that are a lot younger then let me know because i'm not 100 percent sure at the moment but i am quite excited to select them because there's something quite I guess more fun, I guess, when you select your own fry and your own fish that, you know, you've bred yourself. There's something a lot more interesting about it. Now, of course, this is speculatory. You know, they might not make it to that stage. But fingers crossed from what I'm seeing so far, I'm, I'm fairly confident I can get them to that stage. And like I said, these aren't the only fry I've got. I've got plenty more fry spread all over the place. This year's kind of an experiment for me because, as I said, this is my first successful spawning. So I've really spread the fry out into different areas um, and different environments as more of an experiment just to see which area my fry would survive in or grow the best in so that next year when I do get a proper spawning, I can put those fry in that area. What I mean by that is I actually put some fry in here and from what I've seen from this tank, it kind of shows my point. The fry in this tank are a lot smaller than the ones in the big pond, which is to be expected because it is a much smaller area. As you can see here, these fry are slightly more underdeveloped than the ones uh, across the other pond. And they are the exact same age from the exact same spawning. So like I said, it's just kind of an experiment for me just to see how the fry do in these different areas. So that next year I can properly choose the right location to grow the fry on. Now in hindsight, I probably put too many fry in this tank. Um, I kind of overestimated the amount I should have put in. As for the fish outside, they're doing quite well. Um, the parents of the fish from the Sanke spawning, that's the mum there. That's one of the dads there. And where's the other dad? Actually, I'll get some food. It's a bit murky at the moment because we had some more rain and there's sort of a mound of dirt here. So whenever it rains, the offflow water from the mound flows into the pond, which just murks it all up. Actually, there's the other dad there. I'll go get some food so you can see a bit better. The fish inside are doing really well. Here he is. 
Very hungry, this fish again. Oh. Literally, will jump out the water, see if I can get it to do it. Gets a bit camera shy, I think the camera sort of scares it. But... Come here, fish. But I really like having this fish because it just makes all the other fish a lot more uh, friendly around it. I mean, you can literally like touch that fish and it'll just swim away. It's very friendly. But I'll give him a bit of food as well. Give them a bit of food just to feed them up. But yeah, they're doing well. No problems in here. Get a little from outside as well. There they go. So yeah, like I said, um, the parents of the fish are doing well with the Sanke. There's one of the dads there. Um, where's the mum? There she is. Sanke female there. Another dad there. And then the large shower male. I'm not too sure where he is. He's usually a bit slower to come and eat, a bit more skittish. But yeah, they're all doing well. Have to apologise for the murky water, but they're all doing quite healthy and quite well. So yeah, it's just, that's just the update on the fry. I'll keep you updated next week. I'll, I'll try and do about one or two uploads a week on the fry to sort of cover their progression. But there isn't much change. There's no point really doing an update. But yeah, that's it for today's video, guys. Hope you did enjoy. I'll see you in the next one.